Hey. Yeah. <laughs> so do you feel like this whenever you hear that you're, you have to add authentication and authorization to your Angular applications? Yes. Let me introduce you to the Identity Guardians and cover auth tokens in a flash. When you add auth to your Angular applications, you'll use a standard authorization mechanism called OAuth 2.0, along with an extra identity layer built on top of OAuth called OpenID Connect or OIDC. Both of these are open standards and are widely supported by most of the identity providers that you'll connect with. It works like this. Let's say you're working on a manga fandom Angular application. You're going to add an OIDC certified library to it that'll handle the OAuth handshake with the authorization server. And in this process, you're going to get back up to three random strings. Did I say random? I meant incomprehensible. But never fear, because these three strings unleash the identity guardians. How awesome is that? Before we jump into what the Identity Guardians are and how they protect your application, let's go back to those three strings. What the heck are they? Well, they're tokens. Tokens contain metadata about you and metadata about the token itself, which is pretty meta, right, if you think about it. You'll get back the access token, the ID token, and the refresh token. Together, these tokens combine and unify and form a, uh, a, sorry, and form a shield to protect us, the Identity Guardians. Let's jump into how they work. Starting first with the access token guardian. The access token handles authorization. It's from the OAuth layer. And it allows us to get access to data and to perform actions. A prime way to use the access token is in, a, is in an interceptor, where you'll add it to the authorization header to outgoing API calls. If we take a look at a functional interceptor, what you'll do is inject the auth service, a service that's from the OIDC certified library that you're using, and it manages the tokens for you. And then it, you will set, you'll get the access token and set that in its entirety to the authorization header using the bearer scheme. But you don't want to do this for all outgoing calls because that's dangerous. If you want the guardian to protect you and you alone, you must ensure that the access token doesn't fall into nefarious hands by limiting the allowed origins that it goes to. This will prevent your token from leaking. Leaked tokens will allow villains to impersonate you and that is no good, so we must always limit to allowed origins. Next, we have the ID token. The ID token is from the handles authentication and identification, and is from the OIDC layer. The important part of the ID token is the metadata that it has. If we take a look at this incomprehensible string that is the ID token, it's actually in JSON web token or JOT format. JOTs are compact and secure, meaning that they maintain the integrity of the contents but they're not necessarily confidential. So we can decode part of the JOT called the payload. The payload contains claims. This is information about you. So we have standard identity information, such as your name and email, as well as the ability to add custom claims, such as a superfan role. A prime way to use the ID token is using that data it has. Let's say you have a route uh, for your, in your, um, your uh, Angular application for superfans because superfans should have latest, uh, uh, the first dibs at the latest and greatest mangas, right? So we can add a guard and then use the value of one of the uh, claims as the condition. We can also use the standard identity information in the ID token to display a warm, friendly, personalized greeting without making any user calls to get that information because it's all contained leaving us with the refresh token. The refresh token allows us to extend the life of authentication and authorization, and the OIDC library that you're using will handle that for you. One key note about making sure that your identity guardians are strong and at full power is to always use industry-recognized standards such as OAuth 2.0 and OIDC, and to use an OIDC certified library. You never want to roll your own auth. You don't even want to write your own OIDC client library, lest your guardians fail to protect you. I hope this introduction to the Identity Guardians helped demystify how they work and how they protect you and your application. Feel free to find me at Elisa Duncan on the socials or uh, find me wandering the halls. Ask me questions about auth or say hello. Let's be NG friends. <laughs>